This is a video covering my personal ownership and long-term experience with my 2007 Acura TSX. I bought this to replace my Tesla Model Y Performance, which I bought in 2021. That was a great car that just didn't fit her lifestyle. This car is primarily my wife's daily driver, but her commute is only five miles and I always drive it on the weekends. When I say that an old car like this one replaced a Model Y, it may sound weird to some of you, as I doubt many people place these two cars in the same ecosystem, but I did. It was an easy transition as we didn't have a home charger for our EV and we usually embarked on long trips where the EV was always out of its element. When I first got this car, many people would ask me why we downgraded. The question quickly evolved into when are you gonna get a new car? Like I need one, I have a car. My other car is even older and less practical. A 1989 BMW 325 and I have a video about it right here. That vehicle, I've driven it for 10 years. And for those of you that are new here, I bought this car only as a temporary car that I intended to drive while the old BMW was at the shop. I didn't want to spend too much money that I didn't have, so I figured I would just drive this for a couple of months and then just sell it as I don't have room in my life for a third car. But then my wife hinted that it would be a good idea to get rid of the Tesla and just drive the Acura. This TSX is supposed to be reliable and also relatively fuel efficient, which has been. I've never had an a cylinder vehicle because my cars have to be fuel efficient. This car meets the requirements of the car I need at this stage in my life. It's also paid for. I had a bit of equity on the Tesla, um, about $3,800 precisely. So in theory, I pretty much bought this car for what I got for the Model Y. And now I have a daily driver that is paid for. So I went from owing $40,000 on a car to having a vehicle that is paid for that does exactly the same as the other car did, take me from point A to point B. I put 26,000 miles on the Model Y and that was in 21 months, which cost me $24,000 or 92 cents per mile. And I don't want to bore you with stats that only mean something to me, but I'm just trying to paint the picture of what led me to buy and keep this car for as long as I have. It just makes sense financially. Sure, only a few things compared to the peace of mind of driving a brand new vehicle that should offer you years of reliability and dependability. And in the case of the Model Y, virtually no maintenance at all while having a bumper to bumper warranty, which for some of you means a lot since you have no unexpected repairs. In the case of this car, it needed tires right away. So I can see how some of you can be put off by a car that will require repairs and or expenses from the get go. It's not only the unexpected expenses, but also the time and resources needed to deal with an old car. And for further details of everything that I went through when I first bought this car, I'm gonna give you the link to a video right here about my ownership in the especially in the first few months at 217,000 miles this tsx was a gamble but this engine has been one of the most reliable engines ever produced by acura i knew that it was going to be okay hoping that it could be a solid and reliable car with the obvious fact that this is an old car and anything can happen unexpectedly when you look at the exterior i find this first generation tsx to have h very gracefully very simple angular lines i don't think there are many front wheel drive new vehicles that look better than this Acura. I don't think that present time Acuras for that matter are as good looking as this car. I'm much more fond of more traditional looking Hondas and Acuras like this one, which in the case of the TSX may not be super exciting, but it's very functional with minimal chrome and unnecessary cladding hoops and fake air vents that you see a lot in newer vehicles. Initially, I contemplated paying this car, but I've been holding off mainly because I don't have any money and also because it is a tough sell for the wife that loves the car, but she sees no benefit in investing money on such a thing as a paint job. It will run the same, she says. When you go from a modern vehicle, such as the case of the Model Y in my case, to a 2007 Acura, you're going to make sacrifices and you also must adjust your expectations. But honestly, in time, I've realized that this car has most of the features of a new car um, because the first generation had airbags everywhere back in the day when other manufacturers were charging extra for the extra airbags and only had the ones mandated by law and you had to pay extra to be safe. It had HIDs when Mercedes and BMW were putting halogen lights in their base models. It had things like heated seats, leather seating, uh, memory seating, and a sunroof when again, premium brands were charging extra for all these features. I guess the only thing that I still miss from time to time is the rear wheel camera, which is mandatory now, but this car doesn't have it, but it doesn't have a lot of blind spots as well, like newer vehicles do. In other words, it has many technology features found in much newer vehicles, 
which make me feel like I drive a relatively safe vehicle for pennies on the dollar. Don't expect this uh, car to be as practical as a large vehicle, especially now that most of us opt to drive crossovers and SUVs. From time to time, I do find myself in the wrong choice of vehicle or mundane chores like going to Costco or taking people to the airport. This era of Acura was extremely reliable and this car continues to be after so many years and so many miles. The build quality here is merely good compared to brands like Lexus and BMW. The headliner has held up pretty good, but it feels cheap to the touch. The dash is cracking around where the passenger airbag deploys and the material choices around you feel of mediocre quality, but have otherwise held up good. So I would say that a 2007 3 Series may have a better interior, but it won't be necessarily as reliable as the Acura TSX. And that's why you go with an old Acura. You're getting a solid car with a decent interior. And in terms of features, most of them still work nearly two decades later and the materials hold up okay. I've had zero problems with the interior space in here after 19,000 miles in a year. I've been very happy with what the car has been to us in this first year of ownership. And for all those reasons is that my plans have changed for this car and I'm open to the possibility of keeping this car for a lot longer because I enjoy the life of a car payment free life. About this powertrain, it's a four-cylinder, normally aspirated, high-compression engine. The horsepower is adequate, but the torque in typical Honda fashion is anemic, so this car is slow for modern standards. The transmission is a five-speed, which sometimes leaves me longing for an extra gear that allows this car to make better use of the engine power. The engine feels pretty flat often when trying to pass someone, not to mention the 0 to 60, which is around, what, 8, 9 seconds at this point. I'm sure some of you out there with the manual transmission version of this gem can enjoy a better driving experience. I have put 19,000 reliable miles in this car and it now has 226,000 miles. So even with the minor shortcomings of this car, how could I complain? This car has been so good to us. A positive about this car is how cheap parts are. For example, the tires. I went with Michelin's that have held up pretty good. I paid about $800 for them, but I could have gone much cheaper, even under $400 for a set at Walmart. They're 17 inches, so most modern premium cars start at 18 inches and larger. And for that, it makes uh, for very expensive tires to replace when the time comes. All four tires in this car are the same size, so you're able to rotate them to get more life out of them. The 21 inch Pirellis on the Tesla were over $400 a piece, about $2,000 to replace, and they offer half the life expectancy of these tires. This car is very simple, void of overcomplicated suspension components. The brakes were replaced by the prior owner and they're still very healthy. And as some of you know, I have replaced the alternator, the starter, the battery, the power steering pump, and the rack and pinion. All of these parts have been aftermarket. I made a conscious decision not to buy OEM parts because of many reasons. Many reasons. One, the cost. And at this stage in the life of this car, I just don't think they're worth the expense. The only component that feels sub-quality is the alternator that is very noisy. The Brio owner also changed the AC compressor, which is a common issue with this generation TSX. So as you can see, most of the peripherals that can fail in this car have been addressed already. Next, I'm going to give you a quick walk around just to show you the current state of affairs of this car, and then we're going to take it for a spin. Okay, I'll just give you a quick tour because I've covered this uh, before. Remember, I got the headlights, and to me, this is a very good upgrade. I spent a lot of money. What was it, like 1400 bucks, And then I installed it for free with the help of my friend. And uh, I haven't looked back because I think they dress up the car really good. Also changed the fog lights. Those are aftermarket, but they're very similar to the OEM ones and they continue to work after about 10 months. This bumper has been replaced at least once and then I took it off to put the, um, the lights. So it's all misaligned. This grill is loose. So these are the details that people don't see when they give me the thumbs up when I'm driving around and they love this car for some reason. I guess it looks clean from far it's a great 10 footer they say a monet the side mirrors how faded they are and then my wife is in love with this car because she works in uh, she parks at a public parking so she gets all these door dings and she doesn't mind because it's an old car and she's kind of conscious about getting a new car because she's gonna park exactly where the old lexus and the model y got all those door dings all this paint is work these tires are Michelin's and honestly when I got them I thought I had gotten the wrong tires because they're very very ugly for some reason um, I couldn't find the same style that this car came with I'm, I'm guessing it's gonna be uh, maybe no longer available so this is the close the closest I got to the original style and they're 
pretty ugly. I don't, I don't like this design at all. But other than that, the good tires they already have, hard to believe, 19,000 miles on them. And look at the thread, it's pretty healthy. I think I used the, um, the vacuum and one of these seats and the perforated seating, it's damaged now. Um, here, let me show you, right here. This damage was in here when I bought it. And I'm afraid that my dogs may scratch on it and keep, make, keep making it bigger. And then also here on the uh, passenger side. So the leather is very durable. I think this is called something like glove leather because it's similar to the one they use on baseball gloves. So it's very durable, very hard. Not as cozy as I have experienced in uh, Lexus products, but um, very durable. Not so much so where it's perforated. And then here, I bought it like this and God knows if it's progressing, but you can see the cracks here. And from what I hear, it's a common issue with Acuras from this era. I just want to show you quickly how from the driver's perspective everything still works in this car so as you can see everything works the navigation still works the screen is okay no pixelations i don't use it so what i do is i just ignore it for the first 90 seconds and it and then it shuts off by itself but if you touch it then you have to turn it off manually you still have this single touch up and down for the driver which is mostly what i need and then memory seating my wife uses number one i use number two i do have power mirrors and everything works i do have a working power sunroof and then i have cruise control sure it's not adaptive like in modern vehicles but still works and then i have a little information screen right there that tells me things like mileage average speed tire pressure and all that and then it has a dual climate control for me and the wife when we cannot come to an agreement in regards to temperature has plenty of airbags like I mentioned earlier and everything still works what else can I ask for for a vehicle for which I paid less than five thousand dollars let's go drive now this is just going to be a quick driving portion just to cover some of the things that I didn't cover um, earlier in the video for example my wife's short commute what does that mean that means that if we could literally drive a Hummer to her job daily and it wouldn't make a lot of difference financially because her commute is so short. The only reason why she, my wife doesn't mind what she drives is because of how little she drives. So basically I drive this thing on the weekends. So at 19,000 miles in a year, that should tell you that we drive this thing on the highway a lot. We've done California to Texas three times and it's usually about 1400 miles per trip. And we just did one last month and I was driving a little bit more conservative and I did over 30 miles to the gallon, which is great. I mean, thinking about what this car is and what it offers, I think that getting 30 miles to the gallon on the highway is pretty good. I got some legs that were 33 miles to the gallon. On average, I did about 30. I forget the notion of this car being a sporty car, it's not for today's standards it's pretty clumsy um, the suspension is not that sharp sure it might need some shocks uh, i hardly ever drive it but when i do i do reminisce of the days when i had my brand new 2004 acura tsx and how different it felt than this car because that car felt felt a lot faster um, almost 20 years ago uh, or 20 years ago it's 2023 and i bought that car in uh, april of 2023 so 20 years ago I was very excited to drive that car, thinking that I was driving some sort of sporty car. But honestly, for today's standards, this car is pretty mediocre. Um, and not to say that I don't like this car, but understand that um, in 20 years, a lot of things change. This was considered a mid-size sedan, but it's ironic that the current Honda Civic is a little bit larger than this. You're looking at this from the perspective of a luxury vehicle. It was not a true luxury vehicle back then, and 20 years later, it's not, because there's so many things that luxury vehicles um, offer that this car doesn't, that um, I, I understand why people ding Acura for not being true luxury. I mean, being a front-wheel drive, still a, at the end of the day, still the European Honda Accord. As far as comfort, this car is comfortable for what it is, but it's undeniable that once I start driving too many hours, I, I start to see the shortcomings of this old car. The elbow rests are kind of hard, so they, they hurt my elbows, seriously, they do. And things like the noise, it starts to sound inside this cabin, it starts wearing you out. So 
sometimes when I get in people's cars, like the ones I test drive on this channel and I see how quiet they are, uh, it makes me long for a quieter vehicle. Ironically, when I got rid of the Tesla, I ditched that $875 payment per month, but this car hasn't proven to be much cheaper per month. Let me explain. This car, I, I made a video where I say that I had spent in the first couple of months, I had spent $9,500 in it. And then right after that, I did replace the rack and pinion in it. Uh, luckily, it was an insurance claim, so I only paid for the deductible. So I, I have spent over $10,000 plus another couple of oil changes. So if you do the math, per month is about 800 bucks per month. But what I have here is an asset because it continues to drive well, it continues to save a purpose. And if I wanted to sell it, I'll probably get about what, $7,000 on a good day. So having driven this car for about $3,000 in a year, it's not that bad. What is next for this car? Upgrade wise, I do want to get a suspension because this suspension is on the softer side. I think the shocks need help, but I don't know much about suspensions for this car. So if you have a good setup that is conservative, not too hard on the body, I want to lower it maybe, maybe an inch, maybe have control over the height of the suspension. Let me know in the comments if you have a good direction that I can start looking into. Thank you for making it this far into this video. I know that a portion of my subscribers follow me because of this car, so I owe you this update. And for those of you that are new here, I would like to invite you to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and possibly leave me a comment or a question. That is the best way to support a small YouTuber like me. If you're looking for a premium, reliable car that doesn't break the bank, I think you're gonna be really happy with a first generation TSX, provided that you find one that has been taken care of, such as the case of this one. Unfortunately, most of the ones that I see out there have seen better days. I think the reality of things is that I got a lot for my money. Sure, I have spent thousands of dollars making it look the way it does now, but that was my personal choice. And because everything is SUVs now, it makes it appear like this car is less practical than it actually is. I think that it does everything I need for my modern car 99% of the time at a fraction of the cost of a new vehicle. If you're looking for a stock TSX, forget about the notion of this being a sporty sedan. This car is slow and clumsy for today's standards, but if you take this car for what it is, a great looking reliable vintage Acura, you'll be more than pleased as I am. I cannot think of many sub $10,000 daily drivers. It's even humorous how many people compliment this car and do double glances, I guess, when they see how good it looks, especially from 10 feet away. I want to resist the new car bug for as long as I can so I don't go back to my money bleeding days. I'm very surprised at how good, how reliable and fun and pleasant this first year has been to us and how much I continue to enjoy driving this thing around. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.